Not much is known about migraine, even though close to a billion people suffer from it worldwide. The name migraine derives from the Greek word hemicrania, meaning half the skull. Migraine's medication needs to be taken before an attack for it to have the desired effect. If taken later, it has little to no effect. As some of you know, migraine is extremely painful, surprising, and very inhibitory. For some, it starts with an aura. That's when you become light sensitive. Some even see spots at this stage. At the next stage, your shoulders and neck stiffen up and start aching. At the final stage, the pain moves to one side of the skull, hence the name hemicrania, and finally settles behind one eye. The pain comes in waves or ripples spreading out from these three areas. You will have difficulty concentrating, and things will take longer to do, especially if you're stressing and under pressure. That's when the waves or ripples become even stronger. At this point, you have a full-blown migraine attack. The only thing that works is being knocked out, preferably by medication, but believe me, you consider knocking yourself out by any means necessary when it's at its worst. Migraine tends to sneak up on you. You will miss out on a lot because of its surprising nature. You can try to, stop the, you can try to manage the pain with painkillers if you don't stop it before it starts, but the waves or ripples are always there in the background. And migraine is also what I call an invisible illness. I mean, if you'd had a broken arm or a leg, others could see that and act accordingly. Pull out a chair for you, open a door, and so on. But with migraine, people think you're just grumpy. And unfortunately, there are many different triggers to a migraine attack. You have stress, weather pressure, extreme changes in temperature, things you eat and drink, and the list goes on. I also suffer from migraine attacks. Working as an on-site engineer was made so much harder due to the surprising nature of my migraine attacks. Painkillers were a daily routine just to be able to do the job required of me. But uh, painkillers are just a band-aid and by no means a solution. The migraine attacks became a frequent weekly thing that went on for days. And I rarely managed to take my medication in time, so I always had to supplement with painkillers. To start with, paracetamol, up to three every four hours. Uh, when they stopped working, I got prescribed codeine. Uh, eventually, they stopped working. Then, I got, um, then I, the doctors told me to mix the two to get an increased effect out of them. So that's what I did. And when that stopped working, my choices were limited. I could either choose Valium and go down that road, or I could stop and find a new approach to my pain. So that's what I did. Migraine is thought to be genetic. My dad has it, my grandmother has it, and I guess that's where I get it. I love my grandma. <laughs> and I love spending time with her, especially because she makes the best Persian food ever. But sometimes, it's really hard seeing her struggle with migraine and fibromyalgia while she's going through all this trouble for us. She tries to put on a smile, but we see the pain she's in, and how much she hates being surprised by that pain. Being in her 70s, there isn't much she can do but be surprised by that pain, and I wanted to change that. I decided to work full-time with this idea about how to predict pain, and I started doing plenty of research. While doing my research, I found out that supplementing painkillers, like I did, was a way bigger issue than I initially thought. I came in contact with this one patient. Let's call him Mike. Mike is one of many that hurts too much and is in constant pain. His doctor prescribes him six shots of morphine a day. See, I don't get any reaction, so we've got to put this in uh, perspective. In the Vietnam War, when a soldier was so badly wounded, they wanted to give that soldier a peaceful death. He had no chance. They would administer a double dose of morphine to give that soldier a peaceful death. Mike is administered six doses a day. Six doses. Data gathered in the past decade shows that incident of heroin initiation was 19 times higher amongst those who reported prior prescription on pain medication. These opioids have the highest risk of addiction, and it's as high as one out of four. 
In addition to that, you have major mood swings, sometimes psychotic, and they're also a major contributor to premature deaths. Street drugs like heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine combined, the three big bad ones, are responsible for 39% of death due to overdose. Prescription painkillers are responsible for 45%. Globally, we're talking about a quarter million deaths each year. That's 623 people dying every day due to prescription painkiller overdose. We've even lost celebrities to this problem. Most recently, Prince, Michael Jackson, and let's not forget Miss Marilyn Monroe and Bruce Lee. The data shows us that migraine can be extremely painful and worked as a gateway to opioid abuse. The data also tells us that migraine is a very costly illness for the patient, workplace, and society. The results got me asking, is the way chronic pain is being treated today actually creating more addicts? And how can technology be used to address this problem in a groundbreaking way? Because clearly, throwing drugs at it is only creating more problems. We need to look at the root cause of this issue and address it at that stage. Research suggested that we should address three problems. We need to act before an attack to shorten the pain duration and avoid painkiller supplementation. The best way to achieve that would be to predict the migraine attack. Migraine has quite good medication. The problem is taking that medication in time. What is traditionally done today is you keep a migraine journal and try to maintain some sort of control over your headaches. You register the strength of pain, where the pain resides, and measures taken. And as additional info, you might note what the weather was like, stress levels, and so on. After you register a dozen or so attacks, you, should, you might start to see a pattern form. Based on that, you should be able to see the right conditions for your next migraine attack. But with so many triggers, that might be a problem. We all live busy lives. Most of us are not walking around looking for signs for our next headache. Fortunately, most of migraine attacks are triggered by weather-related uh, values. These values are already being registered today by different weather platforms, adding heart rate and stress, we are covering almost all the major migraine triggers. The rest is smells and things you eat or drink, but you quickly avoid those on your own since they already give you headaches. So we have a database with all these uh, weather-related triggers and a way to predict the future, uh, future value of these triggers in advance. It's not magic, it's just called weather forecast. And we all walk around with computers in our pockets that are connected to the cloud. With cloud computing, Plus, our smartphones, we now have a device to calculate and run our learning algorithm on. The final piece to this puzzle is knowing when an attack occurs. The user supplies that info with one push of a button when the headache starts. When the pain is over, the user registers an aftermath log. As mentioned earlier, these are the additional info, like strength of pain, where the pain resides, and measures taken. After the user registers a few attacks, the system starts to form a personal pain pattern for that user. This is an individual unique pain pattern for you and the triggers your body react to. The data is registered, uh, registered anonymously and no personal information is saved. Uh, we believe that all system, systems might get hacked and we will only register what is needed. And personal information for us to do what we do is not needed. Anyways, back to the system. The system will then look for similar patterns in future weather forecasts for the user's uh, location, by the way. When a similar pattern is detected, the system will then alert the user for the right conditions for a migraine attack, up to 24 hours in advance. For those who wear Fitbits, uh, smartwatches, and gadgets like that, we can also measure heart rate and stress levels as well. So this is what goes into predicting an attack. But what does that really do for us? To start with, we can be aware and be prepared to take, them, uh, to take the right medication, and here's the kicker, at the right time. By taking migraine's medication at the right time, you get optimal effect out of that medication. This way, we decrease or even remove the need for painkiller supplementation, avoiding the path that might lead to addiction and painkiller abuse. 
knowing 24 hours in advance also introduces predictability in a surprising illness. This opens previously closed doors to save migraines financial burden on society and on the workplace. You can now, for instance, opt to have home office and work in your own pace on a migraine day instead of being 100% absent from work. Studies also show that pain you're expecting is less painful to the body than the same strength of pain that surprises you. By registering where and what triggers an attack, what medication works and what doesn't, we're also gathering valuable data that will result in better medication and understanding of this illness. And we have a simple way of recording our attacks. Simple enough that even my grandmother can use it and have the same perks as the younger generation. If you're not sure that, if you're one of those people that have headaches often, but you're not sure if it is migraine or not, you can register these attacks. These are stored in a log that we created with the help of physicians. The log will help the doctors make better and more informed decisions regarding your headaches. We've also discovered that the same triggers apply for other weather-related uh, illnesses, like fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, and even pollen allergy. So we've designed an app that is made for migraine, and we have great feedback and very promising results for this app. And we're currently working on the versions for fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, and even pollen allergy. So this is what we, we're using this prediction algorithm on. But there's so much more that can be done with this tool. We believe that it can be, it can be implemented in systems to make, it, to make uh, the quality of life better and even a safer world. I'll give you an example. Could we use technology like this to predict when a driver is about to have road rage? Could we implement this in our vehicles and have the vehicle pull aside until the driver is calm? <laughs> Further down the line, in the future, could we even predict criminal behavior with technology like this? We believe that we can, and we encourage you to explore new ways to do this. We've taken the first step and we invite you to take the next. Thank you for listening to me.